if you stick with me I'll walk you through this stuff you'll be able to see God do things in your life because he's a living God the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstra thank you for joining us if this is your first time here make sure you subscribe if this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you then consider becoming a partner with us first Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world say rich in this world yeah do you know what that means rich in this world I got some stuff I got some things right are you here yes. what do I got to interpret everything charge them that are rich in this world say rich in this world, in this world. that they give away all their riches and live in a barn wait a minute no charge them that are rich in this world that they that they not be high-minded I get that nor trust in uncertain riches say uncertain riches. uncertain riches what would uncertain riches be the world's riches jobs all that other kind of the economy say the economy, the economy. right can you always trust in that no. charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but and then he's going to qualify what you should be trusting in right yes. but trust in the living God say the living God, living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy Amen. what does God do give say God, God. gives me richly all things, all things to enjoy, enjoy. while well, you're twisting the scriptures all I did was read it the God who wrote this Bible who is a living God say living God. living God we'll talk about that in a little bit who the living God is but he that living God that's in the earth is going to do something he's going to give you richly all things is this any good yes. wouldn't you like to serve a God like this yes. it makes that old religious God that everybody else has been preaching pretty sad uh, he's he's not a sad God it didn't say sad God it said living God well so we need to first see who the living God is that we're talking about here let's go to 2nd Corinthians 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols for you are the temple of the living God say I'm the temple I'm the of the living God as God has said I will dwell in them and walk in them I will be their God and we he, and they shall be my people well we know that the living God one of the reasons he's in there is to give me richly all things to enjoy now not only your enjoyment but his enjoyment he likes to do it wouldn't it be good to know a God like this that does things for you I've been in circles where you you had a God who didn't do anything except maybe kill you so you can go to heaven now a living God has to be one that's alive and living and by the way he his desire is to live in and through you you getting this yeah. that's what the temples for he's the temple of God what God you are the temple of the living God well let's just define this a little bit further first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of now what did it say in the last verse temple of the living God here it says you are the temple your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who's the living God the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. I shouldn't have to belabor this over and over but you get it right yeah. the living God is the Holy Ghost say the living God, the living God. is the Holy Ghost well how can you know him in you if you don't know who he is well let's read on here verse 20 for you are bought with a price therefore what glorify God in your body here this verse of Scripture is calling the Holy Ghost God the other verse of Scripture we know he calls him the Living God 
he is God he's the living God and he lives in your body are you here yes. and it says to glorify God in your body glorify means to lift up to exalt to advance to worship say worship. worship how can you worship him and glorify him if you don't know who he is you can't so we need to define to define who he is so we can worship him say worship him. worship him a lot of people don't like it but that's too bad Luke chapter 4 verse 8 thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve who's the Lord your God the Holy Ghost he's the Living God we're supposed to glorify and worship him what no you not and then here it says thou shalt worship the Lord thy God Holy Ghost and him only shalt thou serve so where's the balance here everyone likes to talk about balance balance in life balance in work you got to balance your work you got to balance your leisure you got to balance your diet why well, we got to balance everything you've heard this right you know this is a big word where's the balance in this Jesus thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve there is no balance in only are you here so we know where we're going say we know where we're going, we know where we're going. right but brother if I follow you I'm I'm gonna go here this is where you're going mm -hmm. and there's a reason I'm gonna try to walk you through it say he's gonna walk me through it there's no balance in only thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only now if you know that the Holy Ghost is the Lord your God and then it says him only shall you so who what God are you supposedly serving as a temple in the earth Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost him only are you serving in the earth? he's the only God in the in the earth today he's the only part of the Godhead in the earth so anyway thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve there is no balance in that verse of scripture can you see that in fact if you're balanced if you're trying to balance this I'm trying to balance a little bit of Holy Ghost with some other stuff it's not gonna work he does not respond to that hey I'm trying to tell you all I can do is tell you where I've come from and where I'm going and where we're going you can see this right if you are balanced in this you won't see the benefits I've been balanced in this before and I saw no benefits mm -hmm. say he saw no benefits. saw no benefits I'm seeing benefits now because I know some things that I didn't know back then yes. you get this yes. when I was a punk you was a punk yeah when I was a punk I didn't know a lot I thought I knew everything but as I came farther into these things I know a lot are you here yes. I'm telling you do you want the benefits yes. wouldn't you like the benefit we talked yes. about the Living God what giving you richly all things all things, all things. to enjoy mm -hmm. that's a benefit yes. now if you want to have that you got to go through this channel but if you're balanced in this where Jesus said thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve then you're not gonna see it now I brought this out the other week it says uh, thou shalt right worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou you got thou shalt and at the end of the verse shalt thou thou shalt and shalt thou thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and shalt thou serve while well, you're in the middle your life is in the middle of that you're in a worship sandwich say I'm in a worship sandwich, I'm in a worship sandwich. <laughs> now when I say the word worship immediately people knee-jerk and they start thinking a religious thing we all do it we've all been there the worldly view of worshiping God is bondage and boring mm -hmm. go ask some Christians what it means to worship God they immediately start talking like this and they get really boring and annoying to me because they don't know what we're talking about 
think about the angels you ever think of an angel have you heard about the angels they're in heaven and they sit and some of them say some of them, some of them. the really good ones they get to get to be in God's presence and say things like holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty and they say that over and over and over and over well my worldly thinking of that my religious view of that is that well that's very limiting and boring how sad how in bondage they must be that that's all that they can do you seeing this yes. that's what we all yeah I was thinking that you know people think of heaven you know you get you know, when you get to heaven say when I get to heaven, get to heaven. they hand you that little stupid heart harp, harp <laughs> And, and that's what you get to play for the next well nobody who wants to do that's boring it's stupid it's a religious concept and it's a worldly concept mm -hmm. they don't get it so most people including Christians idea of worship is bondage you're bound to it and it would almost look like that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God him only shalt thou serve I'm in this worship sandwich how do I get out that's what you're thinking if you're worldly or religious because there's nothing else to do there probably don't have to preach on this because that's exactly what I was thinking a religious view of worshiping God is bondage limiting oh yes I must worship you I must, must worship you are you here mm -hmm. and that looks religious and it looks like you're in bondage mm -hmm. but the truth is are you here you ready the truth is it's not bondage it's freedom and there's something else going on there the angels who were blessed enough to be in that position are getting something out of it that everybody else can't get I'm telling you the truth is it's freedom and a level of freedom that you can't get anywhere else is this any good what did John's 8 32 says the truth will set you free what sets you free the truth did it say religious thinking sets you free no the truth sets you free truth is not religious if it's true it's not religious by the way who's the spirit of truth gotta be quick who's the spirit of truth it, it, he's the spirit of truth truth sets you free if you stick with me I'll walk you through this stuff you'll be able to see God do things in your life because he's a living God John chapter 16 verse 13 how be it when he say he, he the spirit of truth his name is the spirit of truth mm -hmm. say his name, is his name is the spirit of truth now if his name is the spirit of truth can he say anything but the truth no. how could he right. he's the spirit of truth that's exactly what he says next how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all the truth mm -hmm. for he shall not speak of himself that's a very sad and bad translation it should should say he for, for he shall not speak off himself or away from himself because he's the spirit of truth mm -hmm. he's the Holy Ghost he's the Living God when he says things he'll say the truth mm -hmm. right yes. it's an impossible for him to speak anything but the truth because he is the spirit of truth <sighs> there is no secondary meaning to that verse of Scripture that's exactly what it means and that's the meaning of that verse he is the spirit of truth he won't say anything but the truth mm -hmm. and he'll lead you into all the truth mm -hmm. who are we talking about the Holy Ghost he's gonna lead you into truth not religion in fact you start following him and worshiping say worshiping him, worshiping him. he will start leading you into the truth and there's freedom in the truth a big wide open room of freedom mm -hmm. Ooh. well he I get to say things mm -hmm. I write things down I hear from God and I write them down and I get to say them he is not who you think he is he's not who you've been thinking he is 
Can you handle that? A lot of people, no, I, I know all about the, you know, you know almost nothing about the Holy Ghost. Half the things I've been saying tonight, you're like, well, I don't know. And you want to write me nasty letters and argue with me. He is not who you think he is. Can you handle that? Could you imagine it? Let's say you didn't know somebody and you meet him for the first time. Well, I heard about him. I heard these convoluted stories from people religious people and they told me about him and then when you go over and you meet him you're like well you're nothing you are nothing like I was told about you mm -hmm. are you here yes. the Holy Ghost is nothing like you think he is how do I know that because I've been doing this a long time and every time I see him and meet him and hear another thing from him it blows my mind well you're not religious enough I know that's the problem isn't it they even need to be so religious they can't have their mind blown anymore well he's not who you think he is you have a religious conception of him we all have religious conceptions if I say the Holy Ghost most people have already got a frame and a place for him to go in their mind are you here you think he wants to be there no. so when we're talking about worshiping the Holy Ghost we can know him better and the better we know him the more accurately we'll be able to worship him is this right mm -hmm. he's the living God who richly provides you with all things for your enjoyment I worship you Holy Ghost who richly provides me with all things for my enjoyment those words wouldn't come out of 99% of the church's mouth because they don't know him that way they're unwilling to accept that that's who he is yet he wrote it in his word mm -hmm. well in worshiping the Holy Ghost I hope you can hear this in worshiping the Holy Ghost there is a whole new life there's a whole new way to live why wouldn't that be he's a living God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right if I'm worshiping him which I wasn't doing before now he's revealing himself to me as a living God there's a whole new way to walk with him there's a whole new life a whole new way in here in where in worshiping him and him only do you serve I'm in the sandwich say I'm in the sandwich, in the sandwich. see most people want to talk about this but they're not in the sandwich mm -hmm. yeah I've been in the sandwich for a while and I know what's going on in there there's all kinds of there's all kinds of good stuff in the sandwich <laughs> mm -hmm. there's a whole new way of life there's a whole new life but you've got to come in to find it are you here mm -hmm. you're not gonna find it from outside you gotta come in come on in and when you do everything else looks really sad you ever see those movies where well, it's not they're doing a flashback but but there's like they just kind of take out most of the color what do they call it sepia or something so it's not quite black and white but they just kind of drain the color out of it and it starts to look dull and not as nice mm -hmm. and then when they put the color back in it's like oh mm -hmm. remember this you've seen this right mm -hmm. when you start worshiping the Holy Ghost you start seeing things and living a life in a way that makes everything else look like that and then you wonder well how are people living out there in that religious colorless world <laughs> I tried to get that across it makes everything else look sad it makes everything else look insignificant I'm telling I'm just I'm telling you where I've come from and where I live most of the time now I'm in a sandwich <laughs> makes everything else look sad and insignificant by comparison but when you think I'm worshiping the Holy Ghost when I say I worship you Holy Ghost 
I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost your mind automatically thinks I'm being religious you have no idea what's going on I'm literally accessing benefits say he's accessing benefits. he's accessing benefits see but you don't know and you won't know until you start doing it yeah. I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost but you think I'm being religious I'm not being religious I'm accessing benefits benefits I worship you Holy Ghost benefits I worship you Holy Ghost more benefits are you here yes. I'm being changed I'm getting benefits and that's what's happening to the angels the whole time that's why they never sleep they just keep going because there's more and more and more and unending unending more benefits <laughs> say more, more. benefits, benefits. Is this any good yes. all right just trying to let you know I'm accessing benefits what benefits well oh, I'm worshiping the spirit of truth I'm worshiping the spirit of life he's the living God what's he gonna do to me kill me no he's gonna live me I had some some things that might not have been as alive as they should be I don't know why I'm doing this up here but not as alive as they should be in my mind right but then he quickens me with his hymnness which in his hymnness you understand am I speaking English anymore I don't know but it quickens my mind so that I'm thinking something that I didn't think before mm -hmm. how does he do that I don't know he's God but he's the living God and he makes me alive he cures me of stupid things I had they just go away say they just go away. just go away when I'm worshiping him he's living God the spirit quickens your mortal body are you here what will he do to your finances I mean that'd be a whole nother message but he's doing it he's adding benefits to you so living God gives me richly all things to enjoy I worship you Holy Ghost and as I worship him he gives me richly all things to enjoy what part of that is religious God giving you richly all things to enjoy I mean that's the first thing the religious person would tell you you can't enjoy anything come to our church and we will kill all the joy <laughs> we'll stomp it out and you'll be a sourpuss like all of us that's not the living God no. he's trying to live he's in there why is he quickening you why is he prospering you why is he healing you why is he giving you thoughts in your mind you never had before why is he making you think you could be someone that you never could have even imagined being before because that's what he wants he's got next level for you say next level for me next level. You don't even know what the next level is we walk around thinking on this level thinking on this level but he's got next level mm -hmm. I'm accessing the benefits when I worship him I'm accessing the benefits say that when I worship him, I worship him I'm accessing I the benefits yes. now if you don't know who he is and you don't know the benefits then you know you're gonna be you're gonna be coming up short mm -hmm. that's why I'm a preacher I'm telling you these things mm -hmm. And I do this I'm not just telling you to do something I don't do is this all right yeah. all right job chapter 1 verse 9 then Satan answered the Lord and said doth job fear God for naught fear is also another word translated worship right he said does job worship you for nothing well let's read on here verse 10 hath not thou made and hedge about him meaning protects him mm -hmm. say he protected him protected. and about his house well he has a house mm -hmm. and about all that he hath on every side thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land and we know at that time he's one of the wealth, wealthiest men does job worship him for nothing no he worshiped him and started to access the benefits worship God he protects you 
worship God he prospers you there's benefits but you can't know the ben I wish I could get this across to people because this message is so new to so many people isn't it, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be but I wish I could get it across to people that you can't experience you can't even know it you can't even know really what I'm talking about until you do it but as soon as you begin to do it things begin to change in you and you begin to see these things and start accessing the benefits do what you say worship the living God who is the Holy Ghost and when I say worship the living God I'm not saying a religious or worldly thing like you've been thinking it's a diversity of operations it does something to you and for you that makes you want to do it again say it does something, it does something to me to and for me, me that makes me, makes me want to do it to do. again yes. do what I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost only are you getting this yes. why only he's the only part of the Godhead in the earth today mm -hmm. you should be glad you came God's doing things for you first Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy the word enjoy and religious thinking don't go very well together do they no. but the Holy Ghost as we're seeing is not very religious Holy Ghost living God when we worship him gives me richly all things to enjoy so all things must be in there all my provision does this make sense all my provision everything I need is in there and enjoying it in where in worshiping the living God you start to see it it opens up to you what part of all things to enjoy living God gives me richly is religious none of it richly all things to enjoy now when you begin to confess talk about confessing these verses of Scripture right living God gives me richly all things to enjoy living God gives me richly all things to enjoy to enjoy living God gives me richly all things to enjoy living are you here well I don't think that God would do that that's you don't think you think you're worshiping in some religious capacity some God who doesn't do that that's what he do say that's what he do that's who he is if you want to know him in this verse you must say it and say it until you begin to see him looking back out at you in it if you say it enough listen if you say it enough the living God gives me richly all things to enjoy if you say it enough living God gives me richly all things to enjoy you'll begin to have revelation of who he is and he'll start looking out at you from that verse and you'll have a revelation about him that will blow your mind because now you know him as some someone that very few people do mm -hmm. he's literally in every verse of scripture you say it until you see him looking out at you the first time that happens it'll freak you right out and you'll have can you understand this you'll have a revelation and an understanding of him that you didn't have before he becomes something to you that he wasn't to you before well I can't do it for an hour I can't say what, an hour yeah I can't do it for an hour it's probably not true because you could listen to me then I'm bringing you in that's where these revelations came from 
I worship you Holy Ghost worshiping Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost and doing these confessions living God gives me richly all things to enjoy and I've seen him and I've seen what he does and he's different to me now than he was all those other years it's called paying the price plus I'm called to do it I'm called to bring you in people that don't worship the Holy Ghost want to tell me about worshiping the Holy Ghost they think they know about it oh you shouldn't do that no you should do it and I've been doing it and I'm telling you about the benefits of it they're experts in not worshiping the Holy Ghost anyway so to enjoy living life God gives me richly all things to enjoy living God can you imagine that the living God enjoys life otherwise he'd be called the dead God yes. he enjoys you dead no. and he's a living God he wants to quicken you and give you better life life more abundantly more than more than enough yes. so he does this by giving you richly all things can you see this how does he enjoy life by giving you richly all things proverbs 10 22 you don't have to turn there it says the blessing of the Lord the Holy Ghost makes me rich and adds no sorrow with it who does this living God you say that enough he'll look right back at you and you'll go I never knew God in this way before mm -hmm. glory be to God forever who Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 20 that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice now remember remember what Jesus said you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve thou shalt shall you right you're in the middle of the sandwich <clears throat> thou mayest love the Lord your God and that thou mayest obey his voice that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days where's the balance in that he is your life people will say you're unbalanced all right I'm just gonna share something with you when I say I worship you Holy Ghost or I confess the scriptures like living God gives me richly all things to enjoy when I go I worship you Holy Ghost I start to partake of the benefits I just can't I said there's like a spiritual serotonin Have you ever heard of serotonin yes. serotonin is a chemical compound that acts as a neurotransmitter and it makes you feel good every time you go I worship you Holy Ghost or you confess one of those verses of Scripture living God richly provides me with all things for enjoy bloop it's like a drip say a drip a drip, a drip of spiritual serotonin that begins to change you but it also makes you feel good you understand yes. why do you think the angels are doing that 24 hours a day they're getting dripped on over and over and over are you here people don't like this but I don't care I like it and every time I'm telling you is it okay if I just give you my testimony of what happens here so as I'm worshiping I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost only I what what's happening to me spiritual serotonin if you want to call it that but some some life is being dripped on me and I want to do it again and I feel it I'm being changed I feel good mm -hmm. say he feels good. he feels good it's like a drug it's like it, it, it causes you to feel different and better then as you're doing that something else happens a an actual blessing will take place something will happen in your situation that you had you couldn't do anything about and it changed mm -hmm. where'd that come from same place it get dripped on you a blessing takes place say a blessing takes place, a, blessing takes place. a miracle happens in my life so what's religious about an addict getting his fix nothing or doing lines of scripture 
doing a line of script by saying it when I say this verse of Scripture what happens lots of things happen lots of things begin to take place but I feel good are you here so what's religious about that advancing in life there's nothing religious about advancing in life why am I advancing in life because he's the living God addicts have zero balance don't they all they want is another fix well I'm just telling you I'm almost always in a semi buzzed state I've said this before and people are like nye, nye, nye. I am almost always in a semi buzzed state and that in and of itself is almost enough many times I'm semi buzzed now how is that why is that well number one I'm you get into an anointing preaching but I was I was buzzed on the way here probably shouldn't have been driving and this isn't fictional this isn't religious what religious person is gonna say I'm in a semi buzzed state that's why I'm saying it I'm reaping the benefits I'm in that place where I'm worshiping the Holy Ghost and he's dripping spiritual serotonin on me every time I say it and life happens that in and of itself is often enough as a reward I feel good everybody's not going on around. I'm feeling good what's religious about that nothing and then a blessing takes place and you know it because it came from that same place are you here yes. <sighs> so I worship you Holy Ghost only I worship you Holy Ghost only and then he becomes everything to you where's the balance in that there ain't no balance in that brother where are you going here so he is the Lord he's the only God in the earth today when you worship him he blesses you there's nothing religious about it the people that think it's religious have no idea I came from the world I know I mean, oh, you don't know your preacher well, I wasn't always a preacher and I certainly wasn't always preaching this the Holy Ghost will buzz you and you'll be able to walk around in his blessing all the time life life-giving blessing mm -hmm. heal you renew your mind make you somebody you weren't before Holy Ghost I worship you you are everything to me there's no balance he is the Lord he is God in the earth today he's the only God in the earth today when you worship him he does things for you when I worship him say this when I worship him he does things for me there's nothing religious about that that's reality and he reveals himself to you in truth say what you want and then with benefits well Deuteronomy 28 8 says he will commit the Lord will command the blessing on you so let me bless you Holy Ghost I thank you that these people have heard the word today and I command the blessing on them that they would know you and learn how to walk with you as God in the earth today those who are partners with this ministry the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and adds no sorrow with it thank you Holy Ghost for those people and that that blessing is on them right now in Jesus name amen. amen if you have a tither and offering hold it in your hand say this Holy Ghost I worship you I worship you with this money I thank you that right now I'm being increased in all the areas of my life my finances are multiplying and I have more than more than enough. 
In the Jesus' name, in heaven, amen. Jesus at his right hand. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today.